Chapter 19 Mary Afha Ya Ain Saad Letters of the Arabic language of which God alone knows what they refer to and mean, but the respected scholar Ibn Abbas said it stands for the sufficient guiding knowledgeable creator, a tribute to the Lord of Mercy. This is a reminder of the mercy of your Lord towards Zachariah, his servant who called on him, secretly asking, Lord, I have never prayed to you in vain, even though my hair is grey and my bones have weakened. Lord, I fear what my kinsmen will do when I am gone. My wife is barren. Grant me a successor, a gift from you, to be my heir and to the heir of the family of Jacob, and Lord, make him well-pleasing to you. And the angel Gabriel said, Zachariah, we bring you news of a son whose name will be John, a name given to no one before. He said, But Gabriel, how can I have a son when my wife is barren, and I am old and frail, not young any more? And Gabriel replied, Your Lord says, It is easy for me. I created you before your human form was manifest. And Zachariah believed in what would occur. He had faith in his Lord. True faith in the Lord is best. So Zachariah said, Gabriel, tell me, what is the sign through which my Lord will show that my wife will have begun her pregnancy? And Gabriel replied, A time will come when you cannot speak for three days and nights. That is the sign of when it will be. Then Zachariah went out into his sanctuary and told his people to praise God continuously. And when John was born, we told him, John, hold on to the scripture firmly. And while John was still a boy, we granted him wisdom, tenderness from us and purity. He was devout and sincere, kind to his parents, not domineering and never acted rebelliously. Peace was upon him the day he was born, the day he died, and will be upon him the day he is raised again, and mentioned too in the Qur'an the story of Mary, so that it is well explained. She withdrew from her family to a place in the east side of their house, and secluded herself away, and we sent her our spirit, the messenger Gabriel, and he came to her in the form of a man, and she turned to him to say, I seek the Lord of mercy's protection against you. If you fear him, then keep away. But he said, I am a messenger from the Lord, announcing you will have a son, pure in every way. She said, How can I have a son when no man has touched me? I have not been unchaste. And he said, God says it is easy for me. We shall make him a sign to all people in every place. He will be a blessing from us. And so it was ordained. Jesus was conceived, and Mary withdrew to a distant place and when in labour pain she clung to a palm tree and cried out for relief, saying, I wish I had been long dead and forgotten before all this had come about. But Gabriel cried, Do not worry, God has provided a stream by your feet, he has not left you without, and if you shake the trunk of the tree, it will bring fresh dates for you to eat. So be glad, eat and drink, and if you see any human come by asking about your child, say, I have a vow to God that I will not of this matter speak. She went back to her people carrying the child and they said, Mary, you must have done a terrible deed. You are of the tribe of Aaron, an honourable people. Your father is devout and your mother kept her chastity. Mary simply pointed at the child as an answer and they asked, How will we speak to him in his infancy? But baby Jesus said, I am a servant of God. He has granted me scripture and made me a prophet and made me blessed wherever I be. He commanded me to give alms as long as I live, to cherish my mother and to not be domineering or without grace. Peace was on me the day I was born, the day I die and the day I am raised again. Such was the story of Jesus, son of Mary. This is the truth of which the disbelievers are in doubt. God is far above having a child. When he decrees something to be, he says be and it comes about. And Jesus said, God is my Lord and your Lord, so serve him, that is the straight path. But some of those who follow Jesus erred, and in time the community split into different parts. Some knew he was a prophet of God, but some elevated his status foolishly, saying Jesus was a son of God, a partner God, or that he was part of a three-part deity. Terrible suffering will come upon those who obscure the truth in such a way. They will suffer the worst of punishments with the coming of Judgment Day. 
they will clearly see and clearly hear how wrong they were when they are returned to their Lord. So warn them, Muhammad, that the matter will be made clear to them on the day of remorse. For they are a heedless people, they surely do not believe, and we will inherit the earth and all that's on it, and all are returned to us as we decree. Narrate too in the Quran the story of Abraham, who was a prophet, a man of truth, who said to his father, How can you worship what cannot hear or see, or in any way benefit you? My father, certain knowledge has eluded you, but it has come to me. So follow on the Lord's straight path, do not worship Satan. He rebelled against the Lord of mercy. Father, I fear punishment from the Lord will come to you, and you'll be Satan's companion in hell. And his father said, Abraham, do you dare to reject my gods? Keep out of my way, or I will stone you as well. And Abraham said to him, Peace be with you. I'll ask God for your forgiveness. He is always gracious to me. But now I will leave you and the idols you pray to, and I'll pray to my Lord obediently. I trust that my prayer will not be in vain. So he left his people and the idols they worshipped, and we granted him Isaac and Jacob and made them prophets, made them noble and devoted. Narrate too in the Quran the story of Moses, specially chosen, a messenger and prophet indeed. We called him beside the mountain and brought him close so he could hear our speech. And out of our grace we gave him a brother, Aaron, to accompany him as a prophet too. And narrate also in the Quran the story of Ishmael, a prophet and messenger, who to his promise was true. He commanded his household to pray and give alms, and his Lord was pleased with him. Narrate too the story of Idris, a prophet and man of truth, who he raised to a high position. These are the prophets God blessed, from the seed of Adam, through which Noah on the ark was carried, and from the seed of Abraham and Israel, we chose and guided them, they were obedient to me. And when they heard the revelations of the Lord of mercy, they fell down on their knees and wept, but after them came generations who treated God's words with neglect. They ignored the obligation of prayer, they follow their own desires, but they will come face to face with their evil deeds when their time for punishment transpires. But those who repent and believe and do good deeds will enter the paradise. They will not be wronged, they will have gardens of bliss to enjoy the eternal life. Such is the promise of God to his servants, the garden is unseen, but its promise will be fulfilled. They will only hear peaceful talk in there, nothing bad, and will enjoy the state they are in. They will be given provision morning and evening, such is the life in the garden, decreed for those who are devout. This is the supreme truth from your Lord. What your Lord decrees will surely come about. And there was a time when revelation was withheld. It did not come for a number of days. So the prophet asked Gabriel, What stops you from visiting me and bringing revelation my way? And Gabriel said, We only bring revelation at your Lord's command. To him belong all things. He knows the affairs of the hereafter, those of the world, and all in between that happen. Your Lord is never forgetful. He is the Lord of the heavens and earth, and all in them do worship him. Be steadfast in your worship. Is there any equal to God, or of his title, true Lord? Is there any that are also deserving? And some disbelievers mock, What? Once I am dead, I'll be brought back to life again? Does he not realize that we created him before he had a human form, and before he was given a name? I created him when he was just a drop of sperm and he will be returned to me. So as I gave him life this first time, I can surely resurrect him with ease. Prophet, we shall gather such people and the devils together just outside of hell and put them on their knees, and then seize from each group the one who is most obedient to the Lord of mercy. We know best who deserves to burn in hell, but every one of you will see its flames as they pass over hell on the bridge towards paradise and only the righteous will be saved. Your Lord's promise will be fulfilled, the evil ones will be left there on their knees, and yet the disbelievers mock the believers, even when we send down our verses in all their clarity. They say who is in the better position, and who has the stronger army? We have destroyed many generations before them, who surpassed their worldly riches and finery. Say, prophet, as for those in error, 
May the Lord of mercy give them long life, allowing them to wander blindly, and when punishment comes to them, only then will the truth be realized. Either they'll be punished in this life, or punished when returned to him at the hour. Then they'll realize who had had the better position, and which group of people had more power. But God gives more guidance to those who are guided, and good deeds of lasting merit are best. They are more rewarding in God's sight. Yet have you considered the one who rejects, the one who turns away from our revelations arrogantly, to say, I'll be given wealth and children certainly? Has he received knowledge of that, or a promise to get them from the Lord of mercy? No, we shall certainly take down what he says in his record, and prolong his punishment indeed, and all he boasts of having will be returned to us, and he'll be brought to us alone, individually. The disbelievers have taken other gods beside God to give them strength, but those gods will reject them, and on the day they will assert their devotion to the one true Lord, and of other disbelievers turn against them. Have you, prophet, not considered that we send out devils to tempt the disbelievers into sin? We are counting down the time till their punishment, so you need not be impatient concerning them. On the day we shall gather the righteous as honoured servants of the Lord of mercy and drive the sinners into hell like a herd of animals towards a river when thirsty. And none will have power of intercession except those to whom God gives permission. He is the King, He is the Lord, the Master of the Day of Decision. The disbelievers claim that God has offspring. How terrible is the thing they say. It almost causes the heavens to be torn apart and the earth to split and the mountains to crumble away. Such is the severity of attributing offspring to the Lord, the Almighty. It does not befit him to have offspring. All in the heavens and earth are simply servants of the Lord of mercy. He knows exactly how many of his servants there are and on the day they'll return to him alone and the Lord of mercy will show love to those who believe and do good deeds, they will have the garden as the eternal home. We have made the Qur'an easy for you to understand, Prophet. We have sent it in your native tongue, so that you may give good news to the righteous and give warning to the stubborn, disbelieving ones. How many generations have we destroyed before them? Do you perceive a single one of them now, or hear as much as a whisper from them? Just as we destroyed those communities, we can destroy the inhabitants of this town.